بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم والصلاة والسلام على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين تبين سنة يوم الدين ما بعد الله مصلي على محمد وعلى محمد كما صليت على إبراهيم وعلى آل إبراهيم كما يد مجيد وأنا بارك على محمد وعلى آل محمد كما ورت على إبراهيم وعلى آل إبراهيم كما يد مجيد وبشرح لي صدري يسلي أمني وأحل العقدة من لساني فق قولي الله منفعنا بما علمتنا علمنا نفعنا وزدنا علما يا رب العالمين ما دير سكر بعض الزناد والسسر السلام والسلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته uh, I apologize to anyone who's listening from the Alaman Council uh, because I think they were expecting maybe Mufti Fawzan Saab, but just uh, he's not here today. So I am taking over for him, inshallah ta'ala. And of course, our regular Burlington community, mashallah, are listening in from uh, ICB's um, Zoom account, mashallah. Okay, so alhamdulillah, we'll continue from yesterday. La- yesterday we left off uh, from the stories of the Quran on uh, Firaun. We spoke about how yesterday um, a couple of things. So let's let's just quickly recap. Okay, so Fir'aun he continued to abuse Bani Israel even after losing uh, the match that Musa had with the with the magicians in front of everyone. Uh, Fir'aun lost, so he continues to punish Bani Israel to show that it doesn't make a difference. It's going to be the same thing over and over again. It, that their Lord is no one, and I can still I can still have control of full power over them like I used to do. Okay. And so Bani Israel began complaining about Musa Ali Sam's deen, if you remember. They said that we've been harmed before and afterwards. Nothing has changed. So Bani Israel, you saw that their um the attitude was again just people who, you know, either hundred percent or zero every single time. So Bani Israel at this moment they start to complain to Musa Ali saying, Udina min qabli anta'tiana min ba'di ma jitana that we've been harmed before you came and after you came, nothing has changed. So Musa Isam reminds them and says that remember, although he tries to tell them be patient and have and uh, ask Allah for help and assistance, he reminds them and says that look, at the end of the day, if Allah gives you the kingdom or not, your goal in Deen is not to get the world. Your goal in Deen is that you can get Allah's pleasure, right? You get Allah's muhabba. So that's what happens here, mashallah. The point is that we earn the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa taala through this Deen, okay? And so when we when we make that our goal, by the way, remember that the pleasure of Allah taala is the goal of this Deen. Then you'll find that Subhanallah Dunya will go up and down all the time, but at least you know you please Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. Okay, and it's not to say that people won't have a good life. If people thought that yesterday I was speaking about not having good life in, in Islam. No, definitely you have a good life. You have a good night, a good life, good wife without a knife, right? Mashallah, everything will end up, end up really well. Everything will be good. But the thing is this, and I want everyone to remember this, is that if Dunya comes up or down, that's irrelevant, because Dunya was it was never meant to stay anyways. It's temporary. When we go into hereafter, when we go into Jannah. Those are things that will last forever. And those are things that we should actually cherish and, and really work towards, inshallah ta'ala. So the pleasure of Allah ta'ala is what we're, we're aiming for. And Musa Yisra reminds him of that goal and the response and that, uh, um, of that message. So he tells him that if, if Firaun gets the kingdom or not, that's completely whatever, you know. So what happens is, of course, we explained this, we explained this last time, that the people of Firaun did not budge. They didn't want to move from their position. So, and, you know, the, the thing is that we thought that, okay, Everything will be the same, but Allah Ta'ala is not silent. Allah Ta'ala doesn't just watch oppression. Allah Ta'ala sends down signs and reminders, and Allah Ta'ala sends out trials and punishments. So that's what happens here. Okay? So they say, so they tell Musa, السلام, they say, whatever you bring, we will not believe because of you. Okay? They say, whatever you bring, we're not going to believe. Okay? Um, and that's the challenge they give to Sayyidina Musa. Give me one second, I'm sorry. So that's the challenge that they get to Musa A.S. So Allah Ta'ala, of course, he begins the trials. That's what we talked about yesterday. Right after a clear rejection of a miracle, the way Allah Ta'ala's sunnah works is this, is that whatever, um, so the, uh, so this keeps popping up. Right? Okay. This is one last time, I'm so sorry. Um, so the reminder was that whenever Allah sends out a miracle from him, after when people reject the miracle, then Allah will start to bring the trials down. Okay, And that's what happened with Firaun's people, that they rejected the sign that the magicians lost. They should have accepted Islam at that moment, but they didn't. So Allah said, all right, since I gave you the blessings, and now you rejected the blessings, now the trials will come from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Which is a reminder for you and I, by the way, the best way to deal with Allah azza wa and to interact with him or, you know, or to be his slave, is that when he gives us blessings, we make shukr to for them, right? If we have legs, we walk to the masjid, right? If we have hands, we use them for dua, right? We have eyes, we don't look at haram. You're using the blessings the right way, Allah will perpetuate and bring out more blessings. That's Allah's sunnah. But when people don't respect the blessing, then the sunnah reverses, 
and it goes to the opposite side, which is like, okay, let's send on trials now. Let's get them back on track through the, the harder way to the more difficult way, okay? So they are, and of course, these trials, again, are to make people see and hear that Allah Ta'ala is here. So they are supposed to recognize that, okay? And the point, that the, the main focus of this is that we know that Allah Ta'ala is not silent or invisible in that regard. Rather, we are really deaf and blind. We're not aware of his signs. So these are all the things that we spoke about yesterday, okay? And the six plagues that came down, so let's, everyone could get a nice recap here, is that the first one that came down was the drought, okay? So it was, like we explained before, it was an, an economic strain, okay? And then, um, so after the drought, they were hoping for water to come down, rain to come down, so the, the rain comes and it keeps coming and it doesn't stop, and the Nile River overflows, and now there's a flood in the area, okay? The flood attracts locusts, the flood attracts lice, these bugs will attract frogs, so these are the five plagues Allah sends down almost like, you know, one after the other, okay? They're just experienced one after the other. And then the last one, which was the most severe or, or terrifying was blood, okay? Blood would, would, would pour from every single, from every direction. All the taps that we open or all the rivers that they had will be covered, will be full of blood. And it's mentioned about nosebleeds, that they would continue, they would have continuous nosebleeds as well. This is also the sign from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So these are the six that came down basically, you know, one after the other, after the other, after the other, ayati mufassarat, okay? So now we're going to continue from there, inshallah ta'ala. So now we, what we're recognizing here is that all of these things, the drought, the flood, the locusts, the lice, the frogs, the blood, right? they're just simple things we thought in terms of existence. But Allah Ta'ala uses them as soldiers. Okay? The blood that, we, that flows in our veins is a soldier of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The frogs you see outside are Allah Ta'ala's junood, his soldiers. The, the, the birds that we see are Allah Ta'ala's soldiers. He took them against Abraha, right? And then we find that the lice and the locusts are all, also Allah Ta'ala's soldiers. He can choose whatever he wants from his creation to be the army of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And he can do it in such an amazing way because people don't prepare for these things, okay? The enemy that, that is the most dangerous, again, we speak about this from, from shaitans, like when we talked about shaitan before, is that um, the enemy, enemy that is the most dangerous is the one that you, like, you prepared the least for. And so that's the enemy that Allah that focuses on when he, when he sends on a soldier of his, okay? And so now they've been hit with these things, six of them in a row, and they still say, no matter what magic you bring, we're still not going to believe, okay? So then what does Allah Ta'ala do? He gives them, وَلَمَّا وَقَعَ عَلَيْهِمُ الرِّجِسِ Okay, this is punishment number seven. Okay, this is plague number seven. And so when the punishment comes, the word ridges is used for severe punishments. Okay, when the punishment comes, and Allah Ta'ala uses Alif Lam on it, to say that this, this is the punishment. قَالُوا يَا مُوسَى لَعُلَنَا رَبَّكَ بِمَا عَهِدَ عِنْدَكَ They say, O oh, Musa, make God to your Lord, whatever he promised you with. If you take away this punishment, we will let Bani Israel go with you. Okay, so they submitted after this punishment. So what is it? Okay, the ridges has been described in multiple ways in our books of tafsir. Some of them have described it as a firestorm from the heavens that it started to rain down fire, which is super awesome. I'm definitely like, I wish, you know, like, I would love to see it. I wouldn't want to be in it, but I would love to see it because that sounds crazy, you know? And some of them said, no, it's just a general punishment. But the overwhelming majority of the Mufassirin have agreed upon that it is a, it is a, it is a virus that came and killed many of Bani Israel. Okay. It was a, a plague, like the plague that you and I consider. Just, just something that comes in, just ra randomly, suddenly into the community, people get so sick and they end up dying. Literally what you and I describe as a virus. And that's why I, I, I never found it to be strange. You know, people got really scared and worried when we got into this pandemic. I'm like, la ilaha illallah, the Quran has been speaking about it so many places. Like, it's just very normal for us to hear about it, you know? Muslims have been dealing with plagues and pandemics for their entire history. So that's something that you and I need to experience here. That look, the great, and so I'm not belittling it. Allah doesn't belittle it. In the Quran, again, Fir'aun went through all the trials, the flood, the locusts, whatever. And then finally the ridges comes, the, the virus comes. And now they're completely shot. They're completely scared. And so we should not belittle it. But there is a solution here. What is the solution? Musa, he commands Bani Israel, he says, all of you should sacrifice a ram. You should do zabiha. Make it Eid al-Adha before Eid al-Adha. Everyone sacrifice something. Then dip his hand in the blood. Then smear his door. Obviously, don't do that part. For, for many reasons, not, not the least of which is that don't, your neighbors will think you're weirdos, okay? You don't want to make them think you're that weird, okay? We're already weird because we're Muslim, you know? So don't smear your blood on the door and everything. But Musa Yisim told them to do that. And so they did it. And Iqipti, one of Firaun's tribe, came to them and said, why do you place his blood on your doors? He's looking at it. He's like, very strange, right? And so he mocks them, right? And so when Bani Israel responds, they say, Allah intends to send a punishment upon you all, so we will all be saved and you will all be destroyed. The Qipti goes and asks, he says, would Allah not recognize you except through this sign? Does God need a sign for, you to, for him to notice you? 
You know, he's making fun of them. And of course, you know that Subhanallah, look at look at Bani Israel's response. I love this so much. They said, This is what our command this is Hakada Amarana Nabi Yuna. This is what our Nabi commanded us to do. SubhanAllah, at this moment, their Iman shot through the roof. They said, if our Nabi said it, we do it. MashaAllah, and I wish we could just do that, you know? We're always complaining about what our Prophet has told us. Why don't we just accept it? Because what's going to happen is this. Look at this. The inevitable end. You all expected it, right? When they awoke in the morning, 70,000 died from the Finals nation. 70,000 people died, okay? And evening time came. They spent the entire day doing what? Janazas and burials. Burials and burials and burials. Just doing kafan and dafan. Just shrouding and burial, shrouding and burial. So they continued to bury and everything like that till the nighttime came and they still weren't done. Okay, this is actually why the reason Firaun was too slow to catch up to them, because they were still finishing up the janazas, the the dafans and stuff. Sorry, not janaza. They were just finishing up the burials and everything, and so they had to finish all that stuff and then go after Bani Israel. So keep that in mind. So now, Muslimanal, I just wish, mashallah, that we we recognize this. That look, this this plague is just one of Allah's soldiers. Everything else is like a soldier of Allah Taala. This is also a soldier. And I wish, you know, like Subhanallah, the way I look at it. The way I look at it here is that I, I, I see that, you know, and I don't want, like, there is, there is a, there is a Jalal of Allah in this. There's Allah's power in it. Right? And I just, you know, people should appreciate it. I'm not saying to appreciate people dying, but just look at what Allah can do. Okay. Look at his power. The way he can take certain people just randomly, just people thought you were completely fine. Asymptomatic, no symptoms whatsoever. And then come down with this terrible disease. They go to the hospital, right? Some of them go in the hospital, they come back. Some of them go in the hospital, they never come back. You know, some people in the same household are sick. Some of them are not sick. You know, I can tell you about a family in New York, my own for, for, from, my, uh, from my extended family, that half of the family is sick with Corona, half of them aren't. You know, uh, just like, like, subhanAllah, this is Allah's power. He's showing you how death works. In action, you're seeing it. So we should understand that this is Allah is a slave. He's, he, and he is in full control of his, of his soldiers. Okay? And so the way we're going we're gonna to solve this problem is not just, okay, and if people say the CDC told you this, they, these people told you this, whatever. My Nabi Sarsim already taught me to wash my hands, okay? I've been washing my hands five times a day anyways. Okay, I've been washing my face. They don't even wash their face. We wash our face, you know? We've been doing all these things. I haven't learned anything. Honestly, I tell everyone, I haven't learned anything from them. They're just telling me things. They're just reassuring or reaffirming what I used to do anyways, okay? Maybe they tell me not to shake hands anymore. But if I shake a hand, I just wash my hands anyways afterwards. So, mashallah, I still get the sunnah. You know, like I've, the Prophet has always taught us these things. Oh, don't leave your, your area of, of uh, pandemic. The Prophet hasn't taught us these things. I haven't learned anything. So I don't, people as Muslims, as Muslims, we should just go for our Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Go to him. He has all your solutions. He's going to solve the pandemic, the plague, everything he'll solve for you, because that was his job. His job was to provide solutions for all of mankind's problems. From the internal, external problems, Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi solves it. So don't, don't go anywhere else. Look at what Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi did, and you'll find the truth there, even to the point of a leper. There's a hadith of Ahmad that we found the other day. It's a good hadith, where the Prophet Sallallahu said, don't stand too close to the leper. He said, stand a good distance away. He said, the distance of a spear. If you measure the distance of a spear, Allahu Akbar, it's like six feet. You know, don't, I'm, just, I'm just sharing these things so that people can recognize that our Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi came with everything, and we just have to trust him, Alayhi Salaam, okay? And so they, and so at this moment, Firaun budged. He completely gave up. Completely gave up. He said, "All right, you guys can go. If you can just stop this one, you can go. Because why? Because people, uh, you know, they can take economic loss. They can take lo bugs and locusts and lice and everything. Right? They can take all these things to to still make fun of these immigrant Muslims or whatever. Right? They can still be offended. They can still do these things. They can tolerate it. But once they see death." Like no, we we don't want to. We're not doing this anymore. Okay, it's no longer it's no longer a joke. Once people are dying, and so Firaun recognized that his people recognized that they said we're not going to do this anymore. So they said, please, you can just go, just stop this death. We can't take this anymore. Okay, so And then, but you know, I know that as soon as they did that, okay, and Allah that removed the the punishment, Musa has made dua, Allah that removed it, they still broke their promise. They said, no, you're not allowed to go. By that time, Musa and everyone was ready to set go, to, to set foot and get going, right? So they all got their stuff packed and they all started heading out already. And while Firaun and everyone was busy with the duffins and cuffins, right? They were already heading out, okay? So now Allah Ta'ala's actual, the, the final thing will, will come from Allah Ta'ala. And this is something that we should remember inshallah Ta'ala is that the strong messages will come from Allah Azza wa Jal, okay? And if you thought he wasn't interacting with you, he's always interacting with you. While awake or asleep, you're always experiencing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala somehow. Because whenever you sleep, He takes your soul. Whenever you wake up, He gives you back your soul. There's always an experience with Allah. If you and I are not noticing these things, 
is because of the fact that you, uh, um, you and I are just um, are, are, are blind and deaf to these messages. Okay. So now we should check Allah does reminders before we go into the last part of Fir'aun. Check Allah does reminders. Inside our house, we have our pests. Outside the house, we have locusts. We're always having some type of animal, some type of infestation. Sometimes it's an actual infestation. Sometimes it's a human infestation. Okay. Allah does teaching us certain things from certain people's tongues. They say that the, the Khaliq speaks through the al-sina of the makhluk. But the Khaliq, the creator, speaks through the tongues of the creation. That when you hear things from people, sometimes Allah does speaking to you through them. Okay? So sometimes we hear a message and we should remember that if we hear on the khutbah or the mimbar or whatever, Allah is probably speaking to us directly. And we're getting a message from him. So don't think Allah does we're not reminding. He is always reminding. He sends messages to everyone. But is there anyone to take a message from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? That is the message here. Allah is telling us. Okay? So now, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, we took vengeance now. How did the vengeance happen? Okay. So now we are going to flip surahs. We were in surah al-A'raf originally. We're going to switch surahs now to surah to Yunus. Okay. Because we don't get the last scene that we want to go to unless we go to surah Yunus. Okay. What is that scene? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives us access to certain scenes that human beings are completely incapable of viewing. Okay. So again, we talked about this before. That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives us all of his, he has all of history. He can give you every single scene or every single event of history. But Allah that chooses certain points because he wants us to take a message. That's his goal. His goal is that we take a reminder and we become guided from it. So what scene does Allah that show us? The scene of a drowning man's final words. You'll never find a single human being who can show you that. And all of creation. That they can't find what, the last, what are the last words this guy actually said. Because they can't be there at that moment. So Allah that shows us by a miracle what Fir'aun said at his last time, at his last words. And all in the hopes for us to take a powerful lesson and that we receive Hidayah. We make dua to Allah that when we listen to the story of the final moments of Fir'aun, we make dua to Allah, Allah that give us that Hidayah, that lesson that we need, that we can break our arrogance, we can break our pride and submit to Allah Ta'ala fully now, inshallah. Ta'ala. In this beautiful month of Ramadan, in this time of this, of this pandemic, in this Quran time, this quarantine time, inshallah, that we hope that we can get this guidance from Allah Azza Okay? So Bani Israel, they head out on the night before Ashura. They set, they set out on the, the 10th night, which is basically the night, uh, because the 10th of Muharram is Ashura, right? So they head out the night before, and they start to go for, um, they try to go to, towards Jerusalem, towards, Pal towards the area of Palestine, right? They try to go towards that area. Of course, Palestine wasn't there at that moment, right? Firaun does not leave them be, of course. He chases after them. He goes straight after them, okay? He assembles his entire army. I spoke about this before, before Ramadan. I'm not going to go over it again. But Firaun assembles his entire army, which is also a miracle of Allah that a, that a general or a king could assemble that huge army in just, in this, in just a span of a couple of hours. Allah doesn't want to show something. Okay, so that was a miracle too, how Firaun actually got everyone together. Allah that wanted to show everyone how he can topple an entire army in a single, in a single instant. Okay, Musa a.s. comes with this community to the Red Sea. Again, Musa a.s. does not plan for it. It's kind of like Badr for the Muslims. They didn't plan for that battle to happen. But it just happened because Allah that wanted something to happen. Okay, and this will happen to Musa a.s. too. That he came to the Red Sea. He wasn't planning on going there. He actually messed up the road. He actually went the wrong way. So when he came up to the morning time, he saw the sea in front of him. He was actually kind of confused. He's like, my Lord told me to go this way. And I just, I, I went that direction and, I'm at, and now I'm at the Red Sea. So Musa doesn't know why he's there either. Okay. But this is what? This is Allah does planning. Certain things happen in our lives. Certain things happen in our lives. And we just have to come to terms with that, inshallah ta'ala. That Allah ta has a deep plan here. He has a deep plan here. Sometimes you're married to a guy. You're just like, I hated this guy. But Allah ta just, mashallah, you know, he just he gave you someone that's probably the best person for you. Okay. Allah ta orders Musa to strike the sea with, with the staff. To show Musa a.s. that the path wasn't wrong. It was the exact way Allah Ta'ala wanted him to go. So he hits the staff onto the, the sea. And then the path opens for him. How many paths open? Twelve paths. Okay. At this moment, they turn around, they, they look behind them and you see Firaun is coming. Okay. His people and Musa a.s. they go, uh, Musa a.s. and his people go very quickly. They go through the ocean as fast as they can. Firaun, he looks at the ocean. He sees the ocean split into seven, uh, twelve parts. And he tells his army, he said that we have more right to the sea than Bani Israel. We own the sea. He's saying that that's our sea. They're walking in our land. They're walking on our ocean. We can take it. So Firaun actually at this level of arrogance, he's like, let's just go in. Okay. Now I, I mind you, okay. Firaun as big as he thought he was, he knew he wasn't as big as he thought he was. Okay. He knew he wasn't that, that, that amazing God that he doesn't, you know, that he can avoid death and all those things. Like he can't avoid those things. And he sees the sea in front of him. That should have been enough of a reminder that, you know what? We should just stop. Let's just stop. Let's just give up. You know, this was the final reminder from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. 
that you can stop now and you can give up because now you're seeing a miracle. You said he was a magician. He's not faking this. There's no way to fake this now. There's no jokes. There's no tricks. There's no magic anymore. You got to accept it. Firaun does not play though. He says what? I did it. He tells everyone, don't worry. That's my seat. Let's just go in. So they follow right in. Okay. Bani Israel, they're rushing as fast as they can. They make it to the other side. When they make it to the other side, Musa is trying to activate the staff. Because why? The staff had a very powerful ability that he can open and close the sea. So he's trying to activate the, the staff again and trying to close the sea. But it's not working. The button is not working. It just doesn't seem to be having an, any effect. So Allah Ta'ala says to Musa Alayhi Salaam, what? Allah Ta'ala quotes it in the Quran. Allah Ta'ala tells Musa Alayhi Salaam, leave the sea as it is, Musa. Leave the sea. You can't touch it. It's not, it's not under your command. It's under the staff's power. It's under whose power? Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Ta'ala's power. It's under, under Allah's power. So Allah Ta'ala tells Musa, Musa, don't touch it. Okay? Leave the sea as it, as it is. They got to get into the middle. They have to get into the middle. Okay? Innahum jundum mughraqoon. Allah Ta'ala says it so powerfully. He says, they are a drowned army. You know, no one could claim that. Allah Ta'ala claims that. He says, every single one of them will be drowned. You know, you could say, okay, there'll be one or two survivors. Allah says, no. All of them are going to be drowned. All of them are going to die. Okay? So at this moment, then Allah, he, he, he gives these ayat. When we crossed, the, when we opened the river, I'm sorry, we opened the ocean for Bani Israel, and Fir'aun followed, and his army followed, Baghian, in transgression, and with hatred and animosity. They were just so angry. Right? They could not just you know, start to stop seeing red for a single moment and just see the sign of Allah in front of them. They could have literally just paused everything and just, just not done it. But they were just so angry and blind with their anger that they continue forward. Until the the uh, the um the drowning had, had taken him. Okay, so now let's go through this. Okay, so now Allah Subhanahu wa Taala reports in another in another surah. He says in another surah in surah to um uh, Dukhan. Allah Subhanahu wa Taala says the heavens and the earth did not cry for them at all. You know, Allah is reminding, he's like, look, you thought Fir'aun was going to have this huge procession, a funeral procession for like for thousands of people so that people in the entire world can see it. The same way he had a pyramid, right? People should be able to see that he's going to have a very beautiful grave and a beautiful burial. Allah SWT says, the sky doesn't cry for him. No one up here, Allah Ta'ala says, no one up here with the angels and everyone up there, no one's going to cry for him. Everyone on the earth, no one's there to cry for him. Okay? And Allah Ta'ala says, they were given no more time. We're not giving them any more time. Give them more than enough time. I showed him a miracle right in his face. There was nothing else he could say. And even then, he still jumps in. Okay? And his last moments were what? In anger and transgression. Keep that in mind. His anger, his moments were left in anger and transgression. It's going to come up at the end. Allah SWT is going to remind us about this. That his entire life was just what? I just want to disobey Allah. And I'm just going to be angry. That's his entire life. And so that's going to be really important at the end when we come back to Firaun. He crossed all bounds of logic. He did not listen to anyone. He jumped straight in. Or straight in okay? And so when he jumps straight in, Allah Ta'ala skips, if you're looking at the ayah, Allah Ta'ala skips the entire middle part where like the, the, the water comes down and everything. Because you and I already know what's going to happen. Right? So you and I are very, very clear on what's going to happen. So Firaun actually, the next scene is what? That you're seeing him jump into the river, or jump into the ocean, I'm sorry. He's jumping into the ocean, trying to follow Bani Israel, going through the water, and then the, the ocean starts to come down under him, on him. Okay? And so what, what do we find in terms of the Quran? Allah Ta'ala says, you're seeing him jump in with his horse. Next thing you know, he's just lying down. Like, like just the water is hitting him left and right. He's being crushed by the tons and tons of water falling on him. That's what Allah Ta'ala says. It's literally so, it's so beautiful. You saw him as being so arrogant and adamant in the beginning. He jumps into the water and next thing you find, he's just so weak and humbled. Right? That's what Allah Ta'ala showed us so beautifully in one ayah. Okay, so the water is crushing him. And it's tons and tons of water. You have to think about an ocean. It has so much water and so much... Um, it, it's so much weight of this water. It's hitting him. It's hitting his entire army. All the horses and all the animals that came with them. All the soldiers are being crushed and all of them are dying. Every single one of them are, is dying. Firaun was surrounded by, by thousands and thousands of soldiers. Now not, not, not even his horse is with them. He's completely alone now. And he's being washed and hit and hit left and right. You can imagine the bones being shattered and the things being broken from the weight of the water itself. Okay? And he's gasping for air. You know, because why? Because you, you imagine like someone is trying to push you into the water. Because that's, that's the feeling here. Allah is literally pushing the entire ocean on him to try to shove him down and kill him. Okay? So he's trying to gasp for water, air here. Breathe in from the right. Breathe in from the left. Trying to get whatever air he can. Okay? It's a very terrifying, terrifying scene. And he's about to go in one more time. He got up for air for a little bit. 
and he's thinking now I can breathe, right? So he's, he has one chance, one chance to say something, okay? So he has one chance to speak. What is this one chance used for? He says, I believe. I believe now. I'm unto, I believe. I believe now. Completely believe. Everything. And he makes it very clear for everyone to recognize it. After he gets hit again with another water, he says, I'm unto. And he gets, goes under the water again. And this is all in the eye of the Quran. It's just so beautiful Allah that made it. It's so compact of an ayah that everything is in there. And so he says that I, I, he believes. And he says, I'm unto anu la ilaha illa banu Israel. He comes back for air again. He says, I believe. That the, the Lord is only one, the one that Bani Israel believed in. He said, I believe in their Lord. Okay? He's not, and he's making it very clear. There's no other gods now. There's no Ra, there's no Zeus, there's no Athena, there's no one. There's only Allah. He's saying, the one that Bani Israel believed in, I believe in it. Like the magician said, we believe in the Lord of Harun and Musa. Fir'aun goes and says, I believe in the Lord of Bani Israel. He says it. Okay? And he says at the end of his speech, when he goes back down one more time, he comes back up again. And he goes and says, And wa'ana min al muslimin and I'm just one of the Muslims. I'm just one of the Muslims now. I'm no one else. He goes and says to Allah, he says, whoever's up there, I'm just a Muslim now. I completely submitted. Such humbling words. I just, you know, like, if people were impressed that, that Yusuf Alayhi's brothers had the jealousy broken, this just makes me go like, I just fall into pieces. Like, a man who had such arrogance. Literally, he was sleeping on, like, silk. Living on, you know, as clothing of silk, wearing gold and silver. You know, a man who was so arrogant, who said, "I'm your greatest lord." At this moment, his entire pride was shattered. Like it just, it just, like the ulama, they cry at this moment. Like such a man who had such arrogance. Look at him now, completely just broken down. He says, "What? I, I believe. I believe in Bani Israel's Lord. I hated them before. I believe in them now. What did they say was the truth? And what? And I'm just a Muslim like anyone else. Completely shattered. His, his pride was completely shattered." May Allah save us from this. We want that we break our pride ourselves. We don't want Allah to break our pride. Because when Allah breaks it, there may be no way to come back afterwards. So he's broken. Allah wants the signs make everyone submit. If you thought Allah didn't have power, if you thought Allah didn't have the strength, okay? He has signs. And death is a very strong sign of Allah. But death is a sign that you and I do not want. Why? Because death is a sign that you cannot come back to the exam room. What is death in terms of the exam room? Death is this. Is that the teacher asks and says, hand in your papers now. Okay? So now the kid is lo he's lounging around for two and a half hours. He's not done anything. He's not written down anything on the paper. And then he's sleeping on, in the class. And then what happens is what? He hears the bell or the slam of the teacher and says, all right, paper's in. And he goes and says, wait, wait, teacher. I didn't realize I, had, I didn't write anything down. So he starts to write things as fast as he can. Teacher says, no, no, no. No answers are accepted at this moment. So he receives a powerful sign from Allah. That is a very, very powerful sign from Allah. But it's a sign that you cannot come back to and say, Allah, I want to change an answer. There's no changing answers at the time. And Allah save us. God, uh, Allah SWT tells Firaun, Al-An. Al-An. Like when you hear these words in the Quran, people should just like, try to shed a tear. Now, right, this is, these are the right words that Firaun said. Look, no one can argue. What he said was right. It was the most haq he's ever said his entire life. Okay? But these right words were in the wrong place. Completely in the wrong place. Allah SWT responds to him and says, Al-an, now, really now, that you had dis you had dis you had disobeyed and disobeyed and disobeyed. You had so many chances before, and you never even took one of them. You disobeyed every single step of the way, and now and you never stopped in doing anything. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells them that you never stopped, you continue going, you never listen to me. Okay, and now that you realize that you have to die, now you decide to jump ship when there is no ship left, that's why you're jumping. Like, there, there's just no credibility in what you're saying. And Allah SWT made it very clear in the Quran that once death comes, there's no way to, to take, take shahada, take Islam or Iman at that time. We ask Allah for his protection. And Allah tells him, al -mustideen. You are from those who cause corruption in the world. You are from those who cause corruption. Okay? And that, that, that is a very powerful thing that Allah reminds us. He says, in this small little, little phrase, al -mustideen, that you were someone who created facade in the world. What were, what were we here to, what were we sent here for? What were we sent here for? We were sent to, to fix the world. We were sent to fix the world. We were supposed to be representatives of Adam alayhi salam, who is a representative of Allah. We're supposed to take care of the world. What are we doing destroying it? Allah is saying that you destroyed the world. I sent you here to take care of it. What were you doing your entire life? Completely destroying it. I sent you to fix it, not to tear it down. Okay? His entire life's goal was what? I just want to do what I want to do. And in order to do that, he created facade. What are we talking about? At the expense of others, expense of his country, 
expense of the entire world. It doesn't even matter that, that for to build a pyramid, you're going to have to take this many slaves. This many lives will be lost. This many bricks will be need, needed. This much material will be cost. This much gold and silver will be required. It doesn't matter. People need to see my empire. So at the expense of the entire world, he's saying, what? I'm going to destroy the entire world so people can see who I am. So Allah there criticizes Fir'aun and says, you were one of the, those people who caused corruption. There's no way you're getting away from this. And this is what Allah there reminds every single person who is, a, who is a corrupter, who causes facade in the world. Anyone who's a danger to the world, anyone who's a danger to the world, they are a virus. Okay? And the same way you and I don't want COVID-19, or the same way you and I don't want the coronavirus, we don't want to get sick by going outside, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will get rid of the virus as well. Right? In order to stay safe from the virus, we stay away from the outside. In order to save the world, Allah will just get rid of the person. Because they are a virus on the earth. So Allah says, get rid of him. Get rid of him. So Allah got rid of him. Okay, so Allah gets rid of people like that. And we ask Allah for protection. You know, to me, it's just, it's just so terrifying that a person, you know, we, we're living our lives. We don't know. We don't know if we're doing the right thing or not. We make dua to Allah that we follow his deen. We don't want to live. We don't want to die like this. We don't want to die like this. This is a terrible, tragic way of going in this world. Okay? And people think they will get away. These billionaires and whatever billionaires and all these people that have so much money and these people that are, are just, you know, are, are stealing from the poor and, and causing this huge, you know, difference in wages, right? That, that the poor are getting poorer, like Bani Israel were in their time and the rich are getting richer. They thought they're getting away with it. No one's getting away. There's no one's getting away. We should stop lying to ourselves as Muslims. If you thought anyone, any of the, the rulers or the oppressors of the past were getting away, no one got away. Okay, Firaun is doing what now? Every single day. Allah Ta'ala mentions, And the Quran Allah Ta'ala says, Every morning and every evening, the fire is being brought in front of Firaun. He's being tortured every single day now in his grave. Every single night in his grave. Every single moment he's being tortured. That you and I are speaking right now and Firaun is being tortured. This is the state and reality for every single corrupt of the world. Every single oppressor. No one should ever think that every, any oppressor gets away from Allah Ta'ala. If they die as a zalim, they'll be, they'll be treated like the, the worst scum of the earth. Allah Ta'ala will take care of them. That's Allah for protection. And, a, and I want everyone to remember this. That you're like, okay, Firaun was like that, but I'm not like that. No, we are. We are. Okay, don't, don't take the Quranic story and just say it's Firaun. Allah didn't give the story just tell you how, by the way, Firaun was like, this, haha, very nice, really stupid guy, you know? No, Allah gave the story for you and I to recognize this part. That in a small sense, when we are out of options, we go towards deen. Okay? So we do the same thing Firaun did. We did the same thing Firaun did. How? That when we went, ran out of plans, plan a, B, C, D, D, whatever, we went through all the plans, we should have just stuck to plan A, which was plan Allah. We could have just went for two rakats, prayed to two rakats, and our problem might have been solved right away, inshallah. But we never go through the deen first. We make sure that, okay, let's exhaust all the dunya. Once the dunya doesn't work, Mawlana what's the solution now? That's what we do. So in a small sense, we act like Fidaun. In a middle sense, what do we do? I'll practice Islam when I get older. I don't really need it now. I want to party. I want to, I want to have a girlfriend. I want to have this. I want to drink that. I want to do everything. So I, I want to, I want, as, you know, when I get older, I'll do this dini stuff. I'll grow a beard. I'll become as religious as you want me to be. The sister will be like, I'll wear the hijab. I'll do everything once I get older. I don't want to do it right now. Okay? But what, what did Firaun do? His entire life delayed it to the last moment. Okay? And in a very huge way, some people think, the worst way is what? Some people think that at the time of my mouth, I'll just give everything away in sadaqah. And that'll solve the problem. And that's what people do. And I'm sorry, but this is what our community does. We have to be very careful because look, what was the, what was the feeling of Firaun? Right before he got into his drowning situation, he came in thinking, I was going to do the same thing again. Arrogance and anger. His entire life was what? Arrogance and anger. So he thought I was actually just going to do arrogance and anger again. He didn't realize he was going to die. Did Firaun really think he was going to go and die? So do you and I think that we have another day? Do we have another moment? Do we have another chance to think that we have another chance? We don't have any opportunities like that to think I'm going to get older. or I'm going to reach my deathbed. Where's Firaun's deathbed? It's literally the ocean bed. Like he, he's, he's sleeping with the fishes. Like, you know, you and I are not going to have that option. We think we'll have that option. We should not take that chance. Do not test Allah. Do not test Allah. Allah that tests you and I. Take the test now. Pass the test. Say, ya Allah, I will change. I will do what I need to do. I will crush my arrogance. I will pray the salah. I will do the zakah. I will do the siyam. I will do the ibadah. I will do whatever you want me to do, ya Allah. I want to be successful. This is what people should do. Fir'aun was put in the Qur'an as the example of the person who was the biggest failure in all of, the, all, of you, all of history. That's why he was put there. To show you who was the guy who screwed it all up, everything. The guy who thought he was God. Who thought he was the greatest God. Who thought it was everything ran un under because of him. So Allah made sure to say what? 
today we're going to save your body. Okay? You didn't want to take any of my signs. You didn't want to take any of my signs. So, all right, you'll become a sign now. Okay? You'll become a sign for everyone to see. Okay? That if for anyone to think that I'll become a god. For that the guy who made the Titanic to say, even God can't sink it. Right? For, for, people, for people to just be as arrogant as they are, just look at the body of Fir'aun. Allah that have protected it today. Till today, we still have it in a museum. It's a miracle of Allah Ta'ala. You know, it's, it's the original tafsir, by the way. The original tafsir of that was, Bani Israel, was, was, they were so nervous. They thought Fir'aun still survived. You know, they're like, we don't trust you, Musa. You're saying he died, but we don't believe it. Allah needs to show us his body. So then what does Allah do? When, when Fir'aun's body goes all the way down to the bottom of the ocean, because bodies float, right? So the body comes back all the way to the top and the ocean spits him out because the ocean's like, I don't want him. And then it comes back onto the land and they see Firaun with his armor and everything and his body just been is completely crushed by the ocean and Bani Israel sees him at that moment. Bani Israel says, yes, yeah, Allah, you did kill him. Because that's how powerful they thought Firaun was. They've been living under in slavery for so many years. They never thought their master would ever be destroyed. So Allah Ta'ala said that you, deni you denied the signs of Firaun. Now you become one of my signs for the rest of history, for all of mankind to see. Okay? Fir'aun, the man who pretended to be God, he became nothing more than a weak and lowly slave. He's shown what he was, what his reality was. Okay? It's a reminder to all of us, inshallah ta'ala, that Allah ta'ala can do. He will take care of the oppressors. Either he takes care of them here or he takes care of them over there. But they will be taken care of. And some of them, and we, we make dua to Allah that we are not like Fir'aun at all. We make dua to Allah that we save ourselves from worshipping ourselves. Because that's what his, his, his ibadah was, right? He didn't have any gods. Which gods did he worship on the outside? No gods. His god was what? The god on the inside. I just worship me. I deserve, I, I deserve this. I need this. It's me. Everything's about me. Nafsi, nafsi, nafsi. We're doing Qiyamah before Qiyamah happens, you know? Don't do that. It's a reminder, inshallah ta'ala, that we should not be like Fir'aun. And what is the second reminder? Okay? The second reminder is... Allah SWT mentioned, we go back to Surah Al-A'raf, the last ayah in the, in the, in the, in the section. Allah Ta'ala says, and we gave the land as inheritance to Bani Israel. <laughs> Allah SWT told Musa Alayhi Salaam, Musa Alayhi Salaam told his people, right? That Allah Ta'ala can give it to you as inheritance. So then this, this is exactly what happened. Allah Ta'ala said, we gave the land as inheritance to Bani Israel. So what is Allah Ta'ala saying? The slaves of Allah Ta'ala will take the world at the end. The slaves of Allah Ta'ala will take the world. Now, if they're, the, if they're ready or not, that's up to you and I to, to take this responsibility. But in Israel, in their time, were not ready. That's why Allah did not give Egypt in their time. Think about it. They were not given Egypt. Egypt came way later during Dawood and Sulaiman some time. Because there were no good slaves at that time to take it. But Allah says, we gave it as inheritance. Once the right guy comes up for the job, we'll give it to them. Okay? Why, why did they receive it? Because they were patient. When people are patient, Allah will give them. So this is the hardest test that we have in this, in this world. That we're not willing to just sit in the exam room just say, you know what, Allah, when the test, when the, the question comes, I will take it. Or when, when, as long as the exam takes, I will be here. We'll be patient. Just be patient. Things will work out. It worked out for Fir'aun, uh, for Musa Alayhi Salaam. Didn't work out for Fir'aun for sure. Right? It worked out for Musa Alayhi Salaam. It worked out for Bani Israel. It worked out for you and I. Inshallah, that will work out for you and I. And Allah has said at the end, And we demolished that which Fir'aun and his people made and that which they raised. We ask Allah for tawfiq and hidayah that we that in the beginning of this entire section, if you remember from two days ago, three days ago, Allah Taala says, "Panzur kaifa kana aqibatul mufsidin." See the end of the corruptors. Think about it. Reflect on it. Never forget it. Never forget any any oppressor, any law that you see today. Don't think anyone's getting away. Allah Taala says, "Think about what happened to Fir'aun and now apply it to what you and I are seeing in in our time with our own eyes." It's going to be the same exact thing again and again and again. But humans humans haven't learned. Okay. But those humans that have belief in Iman, mashallah, they always passed. So that's what we are finding here. We ask Allah that for hidayah and guidance. He gives tawfiq and strength. He gives us quwa and, and, and a beautiful Ramadan. He gives us tawfiq, inshallah, in this Ramadan that we can profit as much as we can. We destroy the Fir'aun inside ourselves, inshallah. And we bring out the Musa Adesim inside ourselves, being humble and, and, and being loyal to Allah Azza wa Jal. We ask Allah for so much tawfiq and hidayah. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.